Thank you and good morning. It's a great honor for me to be here in Brussels today from Switzerland um, and attend this breakfast and this afternoon the Global Blockchain Business Council event. Um, my name is Stan Dostag, I'm from Zurich, as we heard, and um, I founded two companies over the last three years, both to do with blockchain technology, both focusing on this technology, this fascinating technology. The first one uh, is called Nexus Squared. This is a blockchain business platform if you want. We're actually helping startups in the blockchain space, space from, from Europe and established corporations to better understand what this technology is all about, how you actually want to apply it to actually disrupt your business model, and how you actually get the most value out of it if you start using it. And we heard it before, it's all about using it. It's all about getting your hands dirty with this technology that is not easy to understand, but at, at the same time, it's also not needed that you understand everything in full detail. Just see what this means if you disintermediate your businesses, if you actually empower the, the end game, the end, the, the citizen at the end. And then my, my um, reach out for finding startups in Europe uh, in 2015 led me to go to Estonia, to Tallinn. I don't think I need to tell you a lot about the story of Estonia when it comes to e government and the digitalization of their society there. And there I was inspired by actually meeting some of the representatives from the government there and really hear the story about Estonia and how digitalization of a government and the society, the digital society, actually changes everything. And I traveled back to Switzerland and I unfortunately realized how far behind we were with the curve, uh, behind the curve when it comes to the digitalization of the country. So I added up my experience in the financial center, financial service industry and seeing how efficiently things can be done there. Added to, to that my interest for blockchain technology and see what decentralization actually means, especially also in a country like Switzerland where we have a direct democracy, where us as citizens, we are very much empowered. And this very much matches the technology aspects of blockchain. And then actually look at what we can do in order to bring that sort of technology co coupled with other things like smartphones. I'm deeply convinced the, uh, the platform of the future is smartphones. Link that to a blockchain and build pieces of e-government as a service. As we put so that's what we are doing with my second company. It's called Procedis, headquartered in Zurich. It has a subsidiary in Tallinn. As I said, I was kind of founding it there because of my interest. We have a, with Caspar Corius, a very um, engaged uh, advisor in the company. And so that's what I'm here for um, today and talk a little bit about that experience and also about Switzerland because Switzerland, when it comes to blockchain, I think is a world leader when it comes to enabling the startups and me being one of them uh, to have a regulatory, regulatory framework that is actually accommodating of our needs. We are not known to be risk takers in Switzerland. Switzerland is by far um, too conservative when it comes to um, startup um, industry. We have really not enough, considering how much means we have, the financial means, and also from an educational perspective, people are not too risk taking. They're not risk taking enough. But we have a system. We have a system that is a direct democratic system, as I said before. We have a setup that is actually fitting this blockchain technology very well, and this decentralization and the consensus-based mechanism that basically makes up this technology. Um, is actually one-to-one -one matching what we have, the values in Switzerland, and what we basically consider our values to be. And so the second thing why it's good to be in Switzerland, obviously, as I said already, we have a regulatory environment that is now come to embrace this technology and the opportunities that come with it with full speed. We were behind the curve when it comes to the plain vanilla fintech regulation. We were far behind the curve with that when you compare, when you compare the Swiss <coughs> financial center with London or Singapore, for instance, and the fintech regulations that were there. We caught up a little bit on that one, but definitely on the blockchain and cryptocurrency side, we are having a world leading position at the moment when it comes to the regulation. And uh, just a few examples how this can be seen. We have in Switzerland already have two or three states, the canton of, uh, the canton of Zur, the canton of, of Ticino, for instance, that accept Bitcoin as a means for payment for city taxes or taxes in general or fees for basically services. We have in Lucerne just recently last week the first university accepting Bitcoin for tuition fees. So basically you can pay now your uh, tuition fees with, with a cryptocurrency. In Geneva we actually started experimenting with blockchain for commercial registries. 
cannot do the land pressure we faced the years before. It, there the Canton of Geneva was actually using it to try it out and basically build a digital commercial registry. And lastly, the Swiss railway system. Actually, if you go to Switzerland and you buy a ticket at the Swiss railway station, a thousand machines from the Swiss railway systems allow you to buy Bitcoin directly there and then. So you actually buy it directly from the Swiss railway system. So there's a lot of, I mean, that's risk taking. There's a lot of, 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 um, of, of risk involved. Who knows what happens with Bitcoin over the next years? But at least people are trying it out and people are trying to see what actually can be done. And so there's more and more a movement now that you can see happening where Switzerland is becoming more and more risk, uh, risk friendly when it comes to this technology. But also the Swiss banking sector woke up and now, again, I think one of the first countries in the world, we have banks now that accept Bitcoin and hold your Bitcoins in an account. So basically a little bit against what this technology is all about, about being decentralized. But some people actually, including me, it's finding it still a bit complicated to hold all these private keys in a secure way and so forth. So a bank that, that enables you to hold your Bitcoin securely with your private key deposited with them is obviously a good thing to start, again, innovating with the technology. And last but not least, we also had some banks that already started offering structured products on the Bitcoin side, so that's also something that we've seen happening over the last 12 months. Now, while we see good, good progress on the cantonal, so on the state level, on the national level, we don't see any progress. And that's a bit unfortunate because I think technology as such, Switzerland can, as I said before, matches very well the whole country's um, value proposition of, of direct democracy, but there's no real national strategy. And the same thing um, is true for e-government. I was very impressed when I seen basically other states, now recently in Europe, and especially I was in the Netherlands about two weeks ago, attending the Blockchain Future of Trust conference, including the royal family being present, all the ministries and representations from the ministries and bureaucrats being present around tables like this and discussing this technology for a whole day, fully embracing it, fully with a national pride and national strategy behind it, making this a thing for the, for the whole country as a future strategy. That's extremely interesting to see, and I think there's more Examples like this, Malta has announced that they will be fully embracing this technology as a national opportunity and so forth. But again, in Europe we are a little bit behind the curve, you know, in general. Dubai has already announced that they will build a fully government platform, a fully blockchain-based government platform by the year 2020. Singapore is very much ahead of the curve as well when it comes to that. Japan just enabled their their um, trading platforms to be fully regulated and so forth. South Korea is very much engaging as well in, in prototypes as a, on a country level. So there's definitely a lot of movement across the globe and it's not too early to start really engaging with this technology strategically. And again, as I don't, uh, it doesn't come to a surprise to you if I meet Estonia again, if I mention Estonia again. Estonia, not only have they done this e-Estonia strategy 20 years ago already and basically enabled the whole society to become fully digital, they also started experimenting with blockchain technology as part of that already early on. And so basically you have a notary service on a blockchain where you actually can register a bit more um, like a job, but you can actually register your, your marriage on a blockchain. They've started as, um, working with the stock exchange in Tallinn to actually do uh, shareholder voting on blockchain. So there's definitely a lot of things going on. And basically they embedded blockchain technology in as part of this strategy. Um, now, what we don't have in Switzerland, again, something that we learned in, that I learned in Estonia is the digital identity solution. And digital identity is obviously an enabler for everything to do with e-government. So without a digital identity that is secure, you cannot actually get anything done. And so what we at Procedis we are actually doing exactly that. We are empowering citizens by having a digital identity that basically then delivers services on top of that identity to you. And again, everything to do with blockchain. We've recently started a project with the University of Zurich to do e-voting based on smart contract technology. It's very early on, we are definitely at the very beginning. There's a lot of risks involved with e-voting and technology to do with voting, and we fully appreciate that. But at the same time, I'm 100% convinced that with this technology, now we've actually the chance to break that, that, that knot that has been there for a long time and actually deliver e-voting in a very secure way. And that's one of my convictions. And one of the most big challenges that we have within my company then. And um, just today, um, we announced a big and the biggest endeavor so far. We actually 
launching a three-year program to develop the world's leading cell zone for personal data management uh, technology on blockchain technology with smart contracts. And this is very important to me because it's actually giving us back the full control of our identity and personal data related to this identity. And the forthcoming GDPR resolution and regulation here in Europe will actually be very much empowering such, such um, initiatives going forward and it's very important. I think we have lost a lot of time when it comes to the fact that people share their personal data completely without knowing what they're actually doing with a, with a long-term point of view on the internet at the moment. And so GDPR is not a moment too early to come and with, with blockchain technology this is actually a very good thing to, to enable this, 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 this regulation to be implemented fully. Um, with that, I would like to conclude. Um, I'm basically very convinced that you will see a sea change when it comes to our societal and economical setup, when it comes to this technology being implemented and used in the future, in the not too far future. And I'm looking forward to a fruitful discussion on all of this. Thanks.